Well, hello, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day you are watching this. Thank you for doing so. I am your host, the founder of 360 Degree Ministries, where love of Christ must come full circle. And guess what? It's time for another Friday feature. Uh, as you know, the current topic is functional masculinity. And so far we've gone over an introduction of all five things of what functional masculinity is supposed to do and we've already gone into depth on two of the five things that functional masculinity is supposed to do the first thing that functional masculinity is supposed to do is be able to sneak, be able to seek out and snuff out insecurity be able to seek out and snuff out insecurity everything in his business ought to be operating like it understands what he is supposed to be doing and part of snuffing out insecurity is as a man just handling your business but doing so in a relational way that not only is the reality of insecurity not present the perception of insecurity is minimized if also if not also not present and the second thing we talked about was was making tough decisions we live in an america today where a man taking the lead in the household is the is a, a dirty concept these days and what i mean by making tough decisions is is that the true definition of leadership is not necessarily to be uh uh don't want to say autonomous but i, I want to say more like an autocrat uh more like a like a despot uh, men, you're not supposed to be the despot of your household. You're supposed to be the pastor of your household. And as pastors of your households, uh, you are supposed to give the other people in your household the freedom to operate the way that they're supposed to operate according to the context God told them to operate in. Then that's also not to say that you are always looking to make the decision. It is to say that when a decision cannot be made otherwise you can be relied upon to make a decision let me just run that back real real quick men functional masculinity it's decision making power is this that when no other when no sound plausible biblically sound godly decision can be made otherwise that you can be relied upon to make a decision all right so those two out the way quickly summarize i want to go into probably the toughest one for men to deal with and the third thing of what functional masculinity must do is to is to not take it personal now let me define this real quick let me define it and then we'll talk about it the definition of not taking it personal is as follows to disallow a decision or action or verbiage to get into your spirit so much that you fall out of your role as a functional man in your five areas let me say it again the definition of not taking it personal is to disallow anything that is said or done or any motive to affect you so much that you fall out of your role as a functional man. What don't taking what not taking it personal is not saying is not to have feelings what not taking it personal is also not saying is not to care as a man if you don't care if you are perceived as not caring that is an automatic invocation of insecurity let me say it again if as a man you are even perceived as not caring it is an automatic invocation of insecurity and as we talked about about a month ago insecurity is no good Functional masculinity needs to be able to seek it out and snuff it out. So, our verse. Watch this here. Watch this here. 
Uh, we're going to be going through uh, Matthew chapter 18, uh, verses 15 through 22. Emphasis on verse 22. Uh, without further ado, that scripture is as follows. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to tell, listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by the, my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy-seven times. Okay, so, verse 22, because certain translations say 70 times 7, which is 490. Ain't nobody trying to count to no 490. So, what do I mean by this? First of all, let's, let's, let's be careful with uh, introducing other people into your relationship. And presenting them in publicly, let's 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 take it easy on that part. Let's take it easy on that part. However, you do need specific people in your business who are mature and as few as possible. Mature, but as few as possible, who can help you as a man not take it personal. Because men and women are wired differently. And as men and women are wired differently, there's often a lot of disconnects and hiccups in what communication occurs between a man and a woman. I mean, there's bound to be hiccups. Part of the challenge of being a man, just being in a regular old romantic Christian courtship is to navigate the feelings of his girlfriend. That challenge never really changes, per se. It's just that as the man and the woman learn each other, and the man grows spiritually, he can better navigate that stuff and oftentimes see it before it even, see it before it even manifests itself. So, I mean, that's a challenge of relationships. And not taking it personal is a challenge of any kind of relationship. And it's not to say that there's no repercussions when a woman doesn't take it, per when a woman fails to not take it personal, but this is functional masculinity, so I'm totally talking to the men. So, um, but even if, even if I was just speaking in general, there's a greater ramification, there's a greater implication if the man fails to not take it personal. I mean, the man's supposed to be the leader. So if the man's taking it personal, guess what he's not focused on? He ain't focused on leadership. And don't tell me that, that a man can be in his feelings and be a leader at the same time. That is never a good combination. It's never a good combination. No, 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 no. First Corinthians 6, 12, I will not be dominated by anything. If you let something take, if you take something personal, that thing is dominating you. Men. If you let if you let, if you take something personal, then you have allowed it to dominate you. And if I recall correctly, Second Corinthians ten three through six talks about taking every thought captive to obey Christ. Man, not doing that if you take something personal. So we all in the, in the Old Testament it talks about uh, forgiving three times. Uh, that uh, Amos one three through thirteen where. Uh, God forgave Israel's, in Israel's enemies three times and he punished them. And Peter was saying, you know, because Peter, Peter kind of knew the old scripture because, you know, the scribes and the Pharisees had their Old Testament influence over the day. But he was like, oh, well, I forgave I, I'm offering to forgive 70 times. I'm offering to give seven times. And Jesus is like, 
man, you, you, you don't understand how dysfunctional people can be. I'm not telling you seven. I'm telling you 70 times seven. But nobody trying to count to 70 times seven. Now, that's not to say, man, that in the midst of your forgiveness, you don't do nothing about it. That's where number one come in. When you take the insecurity and you snuff it out. Because let me tell you something. Anything a woman tells you to put you in insecurity is out of her insecurity. Let me say that again. Let me say it again. Forgive me, ladies, if I'm offending you. But I'm not really sorry. <laughs> Anything a woman says to put you in your insecurity is born out of her insecurity. So, as opposed to taking it personal, snuff out her insecurity. Then everybody got peace. Sound awesome, don't it? So, that's the model of what it's supposed to look like. That's, so that's why I introduced the security piece first. Because so long as you, so long as, as we as men are handling our business with the security piece, we're not going to bump into what we're talking about today very often. We're not going we to bump into it today very often. But we all know Satan is a perpetrator and he's going to use his wiles and his whims and his deceptions and stuff like that. And he got to get in somebody's head. He got to get in somebody's head. Now, we're going to talk about the whole process of Satan getting into folks' heads in about a month when we wrap up the uh, functional masculinity piece. That'll be our grand finale because we need to talk about that. One. That's its own video. But in the midst of um, in the midst of a man engaging a woman's insecurity, got to do so biblically general proof give her grace to hear because the concept of engaging somebody's insecurity is not necessarily engaging somebody's insecurity when i say engage somebody's insecurity i mean expose it for what it is expose the deception in the insecurity in such a way that you don't open that you don't further open up the wound it's basically spiritual surgery and Say what you want about Bill Ben Carson politically. As far as being a surgeon is concerned, there are a few that are better at what he does than him. So as far as spiritual surgery is concerned, we need to be as good spiritual surgeons, better spiritual, better spiritual surgeons than Ben Carson is a neurosurgeon. Why? Because the spiritual damage that the spiritual damage that is taking place in practically everybody. <laughs> is far greater than anything, any operation that uh, Dr. Carson has done. So, what do I really mean by spiritual surgery? What I mean, what I what I ultimately mean is is providing the specific is 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 doing the specific apologetics in regard to the specific apologetics and spiritual mechanics. With the person that you're dealing with, because it's not always you. It's not always your significant other. Remember, functional masculinity has a lot of things to take care of. But whatever insecurity is, or whatever is in that person, in such a way, because remember, it's not all—it's not our power that does anything. That—that's another part of where don't take it personal goes wrong. When we take it, men, if you're trying to snuff out your woman's insecurity or whoever is in your business insecurity in your own power, you have taken it personal. Don't take it personal. What you're supposed to do is, is open up the route for the Holy Spirit to do the work that matters. Let me say it again. The spiritual surgery is opening up the route by which the Holy Spirit can do the work that matters. Because once the Holy Spirit does the work that matters, the other person going to get convicted. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I mean, uh, can we can we talk about it? Men. I and mean, then I, I need to I need to look right into the camera on this one because this one this was a big one. Don't ever be so mad. Don't ever be so mad that you can't talk to the person on the other end when they want to talk. Don't ever be that mad. Don't ever be that mad. And if you are that mad, at least say this: I need to go pray for a minute. I need to go in the duck. I need to go in the duck off with the Holy Spirit, however way you want to phrase it. But do not engage in a conversation 
first of all, don't be so mad that you can't have the functional conversation. But if you are so mad that you can't have the functional conversation, please don't have the conversation anyway. That is the embodiment of failing to not take it personal. It is the embodiment of the failure to not take it personal. So I've spent like 15 minutes already talking about why so why, what 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 are we supposed to do in not taking it personal let me talk about what happens when you don't do what i say the the, the primary example we talking about is uh courtship men when we take it personal when was something a, a woman said, what's the first thing that we, what's the, what's the first thing that an average natural man going to do? He going to seek out a woman that can, that can feel his pain, that can feel his, that understands him better. He going to find a woman that understands him, find a woman that can do things, that, that, that can, that can make it right. And look, let me say this. Men, especially if you have wives, but even if you just have girlfriends, there's a concept at my job called manage somebody up. Men, always manage, always manage your your girlfriend, significant other, whatever that is up. You know why? Because if you can't do it, that's not her. That's you. <laughs> Let me say it again. If you can't manage your significant other up, it's probably you. It's probably not her. 70 times 7. If 70 times 7 is not real in your business, you can't manage your significant other up. You can't manage the person on the other end up. And that's not what functional masculinity is supposed to do. It's something everybody's supposed to do. Don't get me. Don't get it wrong. But leadership precedent. Because because God is the head of Christ, Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of woman. So if so if so if the head got brain damage, what's gonna happen to the body? Think about it. And it's not good. Ooh, it's not good at all. So the primary thing is is infidelity. And that's not necessarily going out to seek another woman. That's going to medicate on any one of the different things. To try to make yourself feel better. I always say that I always say in my prayer that the depression and the sadness is the critical step. Because you know, the, the the forlorn feeling is the is the is the feeling that we want to get rid of the quickest. Where whereas it says don't grow whereas the scripture says don't grow weary and well doing and have long suffering. That's First one was Galatians six, and the first, second one was Galatians five. Fruit of the spirit. Well, if we seek out a microwave solution to our depression and sadness, where's the long suffering in that? Because I guarantee you, there are few biblical decisions that are microwave based. Few biblical decisions that are microwave based. So. Let's say, let's say, I'm 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 switching gears a little bit. Not not really, really, but as opposed to just spattering off jargon. Let me let's do a let's 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 lay out a scenario. Let's lay out a scenario. Let's say a man has. Let's say a man has a habit of only acknowledging his woman's day. 50% of the time, 50% of the time he spends 15 to 20 minutes talking to his woman about the, about her day and the other 50%, he goes off in his duck off spot and does what he wants to do. Well, he thinks because she hasn't said anything right off that everything's fine. But then she comes back one day and says, I don't think you care about what I do in the day. I don't think you care about me. Why don't you care about me? Now, functional man, the functional man gonna stop what he doing. If he got, the, if he got the physical time, if he gonna, he gonna stop what he doing. He gonna sit down and be like, "Come have a seat. Let's talk." 
dysfunctional man going to yell. The first thing dysfunctional man going to say is, I don't know what you talking about. What you mean I don't care? Well, let me tell you how I care. Fellas, if a woman says something, anything along them lines that's that's deep to you, you should not be the next person talking. The next person dominating that conversation need to be her. <laughs> and you need to be listening. And what you're not necessarily listening for is the words. You the word you're listening for the words, but you're listening for the meaning behind the words. You're listening behind the motives behind the words. You're listening to the deception that you can snuff out in them words. Or you are listening for the specific point at which you need to ask for forgiveness. You see, because men who don't take it personal are better attuned to handle the other person's insecurity. Because, first of all, most of, most of the time when a man is presented with something that he may take personal, the person on the other end has already failed to take to not take something personal. Let me say it again, man, because you you need to understand. This is the primary thing you need to understand. That if you are presented with something that you have to fight to not take it personal, that means it came out of a place from the other person where they have already failed to not take it personal. What do I mean by that is, is that two things. First thing is, love always. First Corinthians 13 say love endures all things. I mean, love endures all things. So if you if you got love for somebody, your love need to endure over being right. Your being right and the situation being right is two different kinds of right. Allow the person to see your perspective. Disarm them with kindness. Disarm them with caring. Disarm them with attentiveness. Because chances are, those are those are the things that the that that whoever's on the other end don't feel like they're getting anyway. So, and why this is so important is that so few men practice this these days. So few men practice this in that nobody gives grace anymore. Nobody gives grace anymore. It's crazy. Nobody gives grace. Especially men don't give grace. The least little thing they get mad at about their about they woman, they go and find another woman. In the duck off. Go and cheat. Or, or even worse, you know, because we got this new revolution now that, you know, the, 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 that men go on the down low. Cause their cause their masculinity is not developed enough to navigate a woman's insecurity, so they go on so they go on down low so they can be the feminized one, so they can be a feminized one dealing dealing with the deception of having a sexual relationship, a sexual relationship based on an emotional shortfall. It's not always a man going after a man, but trust me, a lot of men. Most men who fail in this category seek out sexual relationships based on their own emotional shortfalls. They seek out sexual stimulation based on their own emotional shortfalls. Why? Because sex releases endorphins and biochemistry. Men, you better go, you better, you better, you better go run a mile. Fat men, run a couple blocks. <laughs> you better run or you can't no more. And at least, and at least, if you're running with your, at least if you're running with your legs to exercise, you're not running, you're not running with your spirit away from what you're supposed to take care of. Ooh, ouch! That one ouch me real quick. <sighs> Praise be to the Holy Spirit for ouch moments, because they help us get better. Praise be to the Holy Spirit for ouch moments, because it helps us get better. So, you want some endorphins? Go exercise. Don't have no don't have don't have no extramarital coitus. Don't have nothing that stimulates your mind in that way because it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Don't slip down a slippery slope. Don't take it personal. <laughs> uh, I could go on by not taking it personal for another hour if I wanted to, but I'm gonna think I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it down on I'm gonna shut it down on this note. Remember. In Ephesians 5, 
where the man is supposed to present his wife without blemish. He was supposed to present what he's supposed to have before God without blemish. Because, you know, even our works are tested by fire. Men, if the thing that you are in charge of is not functioning like you're supposed to, you the one got to change first. You the one got to not take it personal first. You the one that's got to see God first. Why? Because men, we the leaders. And we got to lead. With that said, we can encourage me to be up at this normal time. I'm wrap this boy bad boy up right now and say that God bless you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of what God has entrusted to you. And have a great weekend, folks. Indeed.